So today we will continue our explorations of play cues with the help of BAM and Phoenix Live View. Last time we implemented some basic logic for the queue. We added pause, play, previous, next buttons. We added the track list. We um, also talked a little bit about how to use BAM to make our CSS a bit more manageable. And this time we will talk a bit more about the same topics. We will try to simulate playback and track length. And we will also finally try to integrate icons. Actually, that's probably the first thing I will start with because last time it was a bit of a fail trying to use Font Awesome, which now has registrations and stuff. So it kind of made me think a bit about how we can go without it. So I found a couple of alternatives and I think first I will try to integrate one of them. So let's switch to this film. So yeah, that's what we did last time. Um, that's the playlist. You can go next, previous. There is logic for play and pause, but there is not yet any track length. And it doesn't look very pretty because we didn't have any icons. So, oops. Um, so there is a lot to do. <laughs> Let's start with uh, this. So one set of icons I found is called Ion, Ion Icons, I think uh, the pronunciation is. And I think it has everything we need. So it has play icons, it had forward. Yeah, actually, when you look at play, you can see that it has everything we may want to need here. Um, so yeah we can try to use that. I don't know if it will work this Phoenix Live View because it uses web components, so it may create some weird behavior, but we will try. And if it doesn't work, we can still use Fontosan because I did the registration just in case. And we also have Oct icons from GitHub. So this one doesn't have everything we need because, for example, it doesn't have forward, but it does have has an icon for playback, so maybe that will be sufficient, we will see. So yeah, usage. So this is how we can install it. We will need to, let me make the font a bit larger. Let me also close our um, interpreter. So yeah, and that we will need. Okay, so actually we can even do this. I think it looks better. Um, so I think the template we need is root uh, template here, and we can put our script logic there. I want this thing to trigger before we actually execute anything in our app um, to reduce the chances of interference with live view. So I'm putting this here. Now, with that, we should be able to put our icon somewhere, right? So we can try to... I just want to put it here, for example, right? We should see some heart. Where it actually... Oh, yeah. So those work. Okay, now, now we know. Um, let's try to put one for the uh, playback. So in case of play... We can take this one or we can take this one. Let's take this one. So, oops, it's already copied, uh, which is perfect. We can then go here and then depending on our button, we can say, so here we can return instead of that, we can return the icon. I really wonder if that will work. I think it won't. Okay, I don't really want to struggle a lot with that. So I will just do an if condition there. So I will say if plain index do, and then I will say and, and I will say else, right? So I think they both should be like that. Then I can put this thing here and here I will just say pause for now, right? So 
Oh, so something happens. But there is quite a bit of delay here. That looks really weird. I wonder what we are rendering actually. Okay, on refresh it works and then it disappears. <laughs> that is interesting. I wonder if this is because of live view. So that's our button and inside it is the icon. I wonder if we can... I want to switch it from button to be a div, and let's see if it will help it. So we got our div, but then it doesn't really work, right? Or does it? So there is a bit of weird behavior. Yep, it seems that every time we do something, it breaks. Okay, now we know this stuff is not compatible with live view. So we will go back to the first plan and use the font also for now then. Um, a bit of a shame. I really was looking forward to trying some new icon set. But I guess beggars cannot be choosers, right? So... <laughs> uh, okay, I already started. Don't you remember me? on um, then I don't want to start a project I just want to get an icon okay so play so I want to go for this maybe and now we can just use this thing which hopefully will work so instead of this iron icon, we'll just do that. And of course, this works without a problem. So okay, um, we will stick with font awesome for now then. Um, let's see if class media button does something weird. So the width is pretty big. Um, let's maybe switch all of those buttons to use icons for now. Um, so, and then we can try to style them a bit to make them a bit more pretty. So this, um, okay, let's close this stuff. We are not using that. Um, then we can go back here. And we can say, okay, let's look at pause. Ooh. Pause. So we will use similar style. So that's pause circle thing. Now you should see that it changes. Yeah, it does. Then we will all we will also need back and forward, right? So forward. Does it have a circle version of that? Forward, uh, maybe rewind. Okay, it's a don't have, but we actually don't even need maybe to put it in a circle. So let's just do forward. Um, that's the buttons we can use here. So I actually will also switch it to div to not have any weird classes there, right? So I got it. And let me guess, I guess. Yeah, it works. So now those buttons look a bit um, ugly. <laughs> so let's make them a bit less ugly. Um, and of course, you also still need to check that everything now still works. So we can navigate, we can pause, we can go back. Beautiful. Um, so media button. First of all, let's, let's just comment out width uh, and Let's try to do this with button. Okay, maybe it's a bit too high, so we can try to do something like that instead. 
then of course we can also increase the border radius right so we can make it um actually one day that will work okay <laughs> Interesting. Um, we will go complete circle. It goes, but we will also need to increase the oops width a bit. So I guess that will be one run. A bit too much, a bit too little. Okay, that looks a bit more pleasant. Um, probably we'll also need to make the playback button a bit larger, right? So, and we will need to center this stuff. So for media button, we will also need to say that of course, I will use flex and then I will say that it should align items to center and it should justify content to center. So hopefully now, yep, they look aligned now. Because the problem with not using normal buttons is that we don't have any hover or um, depressed and pressed um, states of those buttons. So that's a bit sad. Um, but for now, I don't want to spend much time doing that. We can add shadows and stuff like that later. Um, I just want to make this media button a bit larger. So let's add another modifier because modifiers are usually before for disabled state, right? But we can also use modifiers in them for like larger, different colors, stuff like that. So here, let's try to maybe make it and maybe make everything twice as large. Then we can take this style and we can try to apply it for this one. Oops without the dot of course so it looks bigger but we need to make our icon as well bigger that i think we can change with font size right so i wonder if we can use calconda because we have theme theme with our variables so we have main font size right make it larger no how to make it a bit larger i completely forgot actually how you do that so font awesome make icon bigger okay uh, i as yeah, they have those families so we can do like far two x so that we don't need i wonder actually what happens here oh oh yeah because it's tied to the it affects the height of the container and then if the height of the container is increased because of this button then um, it looks very ugly we need to make sure that those things are living in their own disks 
so we need to do it like that. Um, so that only the container divs are direct children of the control Spain div. We can see that that immediately removes the size problem, but now we also need to center them, right? So we are doing, in this case, this is element of control panel. So controls pane, um, how do you call it? Um, button container. <laughs> I'm not very creative about the naming here, but should work. So we can take this um, and then we can place it there. And of course, we again just using Flexbox, right? So um, I think this will be a line icon center. Yeah. Yes, it is. So now that looks a bit better. I actually kind of don't like this additional circle here. I think it's a bit too much. So instead, um, what we can do, we can try to look for an icon that doesn't have a circle. So let's go back. Let's do play. Let's try to find something a bit more. Yeah, I think that's okay. So it's just far play. And I guess uh, the corresponding pose will be just far pose. So, ooh. Um, ah, yeah, because it's in fast, not in far. That looks okay, but I start to wonder if we, like that looks a bit uneven, um, but okay, for now I think it's fine. Um, let's not spend much more time on styling for now. So, um, I guess next item on our list will be making sure that we have some track length associated with what we're playing there. Oh yeah, uh, there is one more item icon that we need to fix. It's this one, so uh, we can just use the this thing again, but make it smaller. Like this. Uh, of course, we don't need to make it that big. So we can make it like that. That looks already better. And as you can see, we can do that. Okay, um, let's look at our page itself. And here we have some track length. Um, how do we want to actually specify the length, right? Um, I, I guess we can go for a tuple of minutes and seconds, minutes and seconds, because then um, we can, that will be easier to handle, I guess, yeah. And going for a whole, uh, at the same time, there are sometimes tracks that last for hours. If you're listening to classical music, for example, then you can have like the whole opera in one file and it will be like four hours or something. So that will be not really sufficient. Um, if you look at Elixir standard library, we have naive date time, but that's a bit of, uh, we have just time actually. So time sounds nice. We even have those sigils, so we can specify it. Um, I wonder how well those will work. If we say, for example, I don't know. So that fails, we need to actually specify it like that. Okay. Okay, for now I think it's, Okay, for our um, 
purposes. And then, of course, we can just say like minute. Okay. Um, so let's give it a name and then we can. Yeah, by the way, that's a nice trick because you can get the value of the previous expression in ix by using v helper so you can just see that you can go like two steps back for example or uh, just take the current one so pretty cool thing so can i take like our minute? okay so we get access to all of that and it looks correct to me. Okay, um, that will be fine then. So we will also just add length here. Ooh. Yeah, of course, everything failed because now we don't have this method, right? So what I will do, I will again use magical editing superpowers of the um, Visual Studio Code. And then I can do the sigil and then I can do this. And then I can just set it to something that looks reasonable to me. So for example, I don't know, something like that. That should allow this thing to compile and show its playlist again. We'll need to maybe change it, right, to so some randomization on the goal. Um, I don't know. Sorry, Mona Lake, uh, I don't want to spend much time looking up the actual values. But here it doesn't really matter because those things have always fixed length. So not much of a problem to just invent those. Let's just save that and let's put something here and maybe like that and also we can experiment a bit with different durations just for the sake of it, right? So. Um, now we will need to show it. Um, so we can go for another class here and do them. Now, of course, we are running a bit out of space here. So I want to make the container a bit bigger, a bit bigger. And uh, for that, uh, we'll need to go to playlist. And here we specified a length like that. Here you can see that we have really nice display already, but of course, most tracks still, for most people, it will be music that continues, like one track continues for some minutes. So those zeros are a bit um, too much here. Uh, I think we can pre-process that a bit. So we can look um, to Explorer and here we can actually add page view, I think. Shall we, shall we not? Yeah, let's um, add a view function. So let's first see if I remember how to do this stuff correctly. Um, actually, I wanted to make it a bit bigger. Yeah show uh, length maybe pretty fine no. pretty length 
and here we take some links um, and then here for now I just want to return something so why doesn't it like it uh, variable length isn't used okay that's fine we are fine with that do we actually need to use it here I think we can just use the function now if I remember correctly so we can just do like this I think not sure no as you find function um did I put it in correct place? Maybe I need to move this thing here. Okay, it's not super happy about it. Uh, I guess I put it in the correct place, but I need to reference it somewhere, right? Like view, view module. Speed falls render render assign maybe test um missing view modules list live mix. Let's try to go now. So they do a bunch of live components and they also just call the thing. Okay, maybe I can just actually, um, maybe I can do it simpler. Maybe I can just alias the thing, right? So if I alias it, I would imagine that it will be a bit better. Um, I can just put aliases before this thing. So page view, and then I can do this. Yeah, it worked. Okay, <laughs> it was simpler. Um, but it's still weird because I thought that we don't need to specify a specific alias for that. Maybe I'm mixing up something here. But fine, um, it works. So then we can do some conditional logic. So we say, um, Let's do this. So we can take hours, minutes, and seconds, and then we can say links, hour, links, minute, length, second. And then if hours zero, then um, we just do this. Um, Insert minute and second. Alternatively, we return the whole thing, right? So that looks better. But now we have a bit of a problem because um, Actually, we will need to use cont here. So we will say if um, hours are zero and minutes are zero, then we only need to return seconds. So we just return seconds. Let's just make it like that. So that we are type stable and that we always return string from this function. Um, if we only have hours equal to zero, then we know that we need to use this thing, right? Um, and alternatively, we 
we can do this and then that we don't need and that should be our return hmm. this actually looks a bit weird because this 15 <laughs> here um I guess that's a bit of uh, that's too much. Okay, let's return back to our original logic. Okay, that looks a bit better. So now we will need to make sure that they are aligned to the right, right? Um, so in our template we use track field track length so track length where we can set width to be less because we don't need as much space here so we can say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So like maximum that we can go there is nine symbols. But that's even a bit too much. I guess it also will never happen actually. So we can go a bit less. And then we can also make it align to the right side, right? So I think track is also flux. So game. Okay. Oh no, no, and um, uh, I think it should be justify content flex and here. Or am I doing something stupid? Okay, let's look at those um, elements and see what we are doing wrong. So that's our container. Why doesn't it work? There's no effect in since it needs a flex container, nor a grid container. Track field. Ooh, um, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, true. So, okay, that looks better. Because like this looks a bit awkward so maybe we should try to go for the standard rendering in cases shaker so let's just do two string length because i think then we will get i think that looks better and by the way we can also see that our width is sufficient here right so, yep, it fits. But then, of course, I wonder uh, if we can format number elixir. I want to add leading zeros there, so. Decimals. Erlang. Okay, we can try to do the. Oops. Um, oh, no, that's not what I want to do. I want to um, return it back. So there is a function in Erlang. Erlang. I actually think it integer to integer to binary. Um, do I have docs? Yeah, without docs, okay, integer base. And it actually doesn't accept things. Decimals zero. Floor to round, floor to string. Decimals. Mm -hmm. I wonder if Elixir has Elixir formatting options in pictures. It has something like that. Oh, 
Oh, there is a thing called string pad leading. Okay, that's beautiful. So I think we always want to pad seconds, right? So mm, But first, I want to see how it works. So, for example, first of all, can I actually do something like that? Count, I don't know, five. No, of course, it needs a string, okay. And you can say padding is zero. Perfect. Um, so now we know that this thing works. Um, seconds, then will be two strings, seconds, and then we just pass them here and we say um, we will need two numbers and we will need to pass with zero. So that will be our seconds. Okay, that looks way Prepare now. We don't do it for minutes, but um, and let's not do it for hours. So we can just move this logic here, and then here we do it like that, and here we do it like hours. So we got some prettier looking numbers. Oh yeah, and if we have hours, then we need to pad minutes. So, the string minutes, and then we do the same exact thing. We can extract it into a helper function, but for now we won't care. And now if you look, so we got all our cases. Yeah, it looks way better now, and you can see that this is time. So in here, Okay, perfect. Yeah, we repeat this stuff several times. I think I just multiplied by 10 or something like that. So that's why, yeah, I duplicated the list 10 times. That's why you can see that we have repeated values here. Okay, that is perfect. Now it looks better. I also want to make it a bit maybe higher so you can see a bit more tracks here. So let's maybe switch it to no 40. Okay, that looks better. One, of course, sad thing is right now when we do boss and then we play, we lose the position, right? So we will need to fix our state. And then we will also need to add some kind of the um, track search. How, how do you actually call this? Like progress bar for the playing music? I guess. Um, we don't need that anymore. Looking at controls, where would we want to place it? Should we place it the same way Spotify does it? So a bit below. We can, so then we will need to say, this is controls pane, this is, um, I will put another, let's see, here. Should I put another div here? I think, yeah, so let's do this. So, yeah, let's see if I'm gonna say class is controls, Pain and it's an element um, buttons. Just all of this beauty. And then when we move it up a bit, it has, oops. Uh, of course, we yanked our styles here a bit. So um, let's see. Controls pain is. Of course, this 
where we also need to say okay um I don't think that we even need that. We can just say stretch, maybe. No, it doesn't work. Uh, I feel like sometimes it suggests Visual Studio suggests to use stuff options that are not really available for the component. So um, I don't know space. Basis. I want the my main axis. Um, we can then just do maybe with. Yeah. Okay, we don't actually need button here. We can just do that. So, okay, that looks like it used to look, but now we should be able to put another thing here, right? So this space evenly we don't really need anymore. And here the flex direction actually will be then column because we will need to put the next thing below it. So pin button container, maybe let's give it a bit more intent in the name because otherwise it will be a bit weird then Yep. Um, now the question is where do we put this? So this is our buttons thingy. Can and here we can put another div. Um, that will be let's see for controls being um, track progress. Uh, how do you even call this in track position? I guess right. And how do you draw this thing? So. I guess we will need to start with putting here a number of spans, right, for the um, timings. So here we will always have this. And here we will always have the track length, right? But here, of course, the interesting thing will happen is that we need to take the plane track, right? So if I just write it here, it will not work because there is no track selected now. Instead, we need to look at our, yeah, I should probably want to do it like that. We will need to look at our logics over here. So we have plane index, but we don't, have the track itself that we are playing, right? So for that, we will need to for example, I don't want to duplicate state here, right? I don't want to make it I don't want to store the track in another field. Um, at the same time, I also don't want to every time go through hoops in my template to get the track. But we have this view model which we can actually use for that, I think. Is it uh, is it an honorable thing? Uh, maybe no. Maybe, maybe we have a better solution for that. We have this module track where we can say, um, get plane which then will do the following so it takes stay oh sorry this is track we don't have a module for our state 
So maybe it's time to actually do the state module. And here we can then do struct and we can say, okay, we have plane index and we have Q. And then we can do, um, I don't even want to do new for now. I just want to get plane track where we will take state, which will be this and then we will just say state q um, num at plane index so that will only happen if we actually have a plane track here so Oh, and that actually makes stuff a bit easier. So we can just say, when this is nil, we don't care. We just, okay, we just return nil. And if this is some number, so instead we'll do, do end. And here we will just do, uh, We'll also give it a name, so we'll call this in state. You can then do it like that, so you can see what I'm writing here. Um, and then we can take state q, and then we can do enum add, and return the something at index. Okay, I'm trying to unlearn doing this and actually. <laughs> do that when we don't need to pipeline because then it's a bit shorter and it's a bit easier to read actually. Now we will need to make the state here we just can then say okay let's alias state and track. Um, and here we can just do this and something is breaking undefined function track in 16.9 oh yeah of course so we can then say we can actually place it somewhere here i guess right so we can say we have um current track and here we can then say um, okay let's do aliases here what is the page life and then we have state so state get plain track um can we actually do that like that i wonder like if i just pass a science here we would oh, it will break awfully so protocol in will not implement it um <laughs> where is it not implemented i wonder Oh yeah, um, of course, that warning we can fix, but then we still get the other warning. So what doesn't it like? It doesn't like to get this thing, it's like tracks, and this is all protocol and find exception. Elixir. So, here. Ah, so it tries to go through each of those. Okay, okay, it's a, it, expe it expects a map, but instead, it gets the state struct. 
So we need to just, okay, that will be a bit weird then, right? Because then we either losing the nice module boundaries instead of having instead of having the state thingy encapsulated here, we will just have a module that works with the math. Um, working with the math is a bit sad here, but like. It will be simpler, um, but if we do this, then we will always need to go through state, right? We will need to say, okay, um, like that, and like that. But maybe that's actually a better thing. Matching in. Okay. Although, actually, maybe it's a good thing because we shouldn't really care that much in the template where we exactly store it. Um, I really hope that it can actually track the assigns. We can check it with the WebSockets inspector, right? Um, it also gets this weird error. Oh yeah, um, so <laughs> you don't need to pass state here. Ooh, uh, accordingly. Okay, that was not necessary, fine. But what else don't you like? Um, I need to clear this because otherwise it drives me a bit insane. Plain index is not available. Okay, plain index, of course, the state plane. Index state state are oh, not found in length current track length. Yay, um, we did it. So now what did we do that? Did it, why did it stop working? No. No. Um, it actually doesn't respond to click events anymore. Ooh, and there is some weird error. It's not found in. Oh, yeah, yeah, because of course, of course, I'm done. So we have this state here thing here and we just take it and we put it in queue and happens here oh yeah the state Okay, I think that was a really bad idea. So um, we can add the state thing everywhere, but then it makes all other code so much more ugly, uglier here. Um, so, okay, let's instead do this. That now will um, means that we will need to do the state here. We will just remove it. What we will do, we will still put all the logic in the state module but uh, do it like that. It's fine. 
fine because then we won't need to so we'll just make it a map we remove the struct here so that's a bit unfortunate but then okay are we back to normal yes we're back to normal and now you can see that we actually get in the numbers here there is still an error now it's an error here plain index plain index do we do state stuff anywhere plain track stack here state state something still breaks ah yeah we cannot take uh, length from yelm so oh yeah so i guess this thing shouldn't even be shown if um if current track if is new current oh yeah if current track then we just do this and otherwise we don't so that is only rendered when there is a current track i hope we won't see any more errors here Okay, so that looks better. We now have um, this logic working, but now we need to put some kind of progress bar here, right? Um, so, state, let's just quickly write a module dot here. Logic for working with the state will be play here. Um, So here we can go back to our page and we can try to put something here. What can that be in HTML actually? Um, we can just do something like a div, I guess. Can we do something like a div here? How do you progress bars with CSS actually? I have absolutely no clue. We need some idea. So <laughs> CSS tricks as usual. Uh, okay, that's a bit too much, but so they, oh, I see. So they just have a div and they put a span and they give it a background, I guess, and they just set a width to a specific proportion of that. Okay, there is also like old border radiuses, padding box, shadow position, background, height, display uh we can try that okay that sounds like a reasonable idea to try so do we need to do the deep thing here well i actually will try to do a span and i will try to do it like that so let's say um that will be also a band block because you can put this kind of stuff anywhere not necessarily in the control spanner panel or pane or whatever so we can just say um, track position, right? And here we will have an element which will be track position filler, let's call it. Um, this is actually not even controls, so we can then add another CSS file, track position. Um, here we will just import it. Um, 
and then I can just open it. So then here, uh, yeah, track position is our main class. Now we don't do, let's just set it to fix width for now. So maybe like that. And uh, maybe let's make it, oh, I don't know. And let's give it a background color so we can see it. We don't actually get it. I wonder why can we, I guess because it doesn't has any, any content. So yeah, we get the track position, but the it's just zero for some since it has displayed in line. Ah oh, yeah, that's why they um okay, we'll make it a diff. And that we actually will also make a diff. I don't think we need to spawn that because actually I also want to see if I can do it with Flexbox if uh, I really need position relative there. So okay, we got something. Uh we can also see that our track position thing needs to be be a flex box which is do we have control spain track position no we don't so that will be a summary here i would imagine we need to say that it's a flex box and of course then it will be by default a raw then we need to say that um Justify content should be space between, I guess. So that's a bit better. Um, I want to cut its width to, I don't know, um, 80% maybe. And in the parent, it should be actually. So we have a column and we need to align items to center, I guess. Yes. So that's a bit better. Um, can now, there is also some weirdness happening with the position here because, okay, come on, come on, come on, we can do that. Yes, we can. So here we have this thing. Ah, oh, yeah, because it's sticking to the upper part of it, right? So I need to make it a bit. Um, I need to also make sure that this track budget, but this position <laughs> um, theme is um, that all those that both the track position element and the um, numbers are vertically aligned. So for that, um, we need to say align items also center. Okay, that looks better. Now, do I want this to, okay, for track position, maybe we can even say, I don't know, 90%, what will, Ooh. A bit too much. So now with no background color, let's set it maybe, let's look at our theme thingy um, and say um, track position background. We can set it for now to something that maybe is, I don't know, I can even set it to white uh, for now. We can use it here. Oops. Okay. Now for the track position filler. We can say that it's that is I know, seventy percent for now, and that background color is hot pink. 
and its height is also 100%. So, we drew something. Now, of course, the problem is that it doesn't has, have any indication. Um, oh yeah, we can, of course, also make the cursor pointer, I think. So yeah, we get this in, which kind of says to you that you can actually click on that and it, something theoretically will happen, but that is not sufficient. We will need to now pretend that we are playing stuff. Now we can use, we can try to use HTML audio, but my idea here is not about playing audio necessarily. It's pretty trivial to do. The main thing here is about trying to make this playlist look nice and work nice. Um, so. I won't spend time on that, but we can try to use a timer in Phoenix Live View, and then we can see if that will be, if it will look realistic, then we can fix some bugs that I already see with that. Um, yeah. Actually, by the way, I also really like this hot pink. Sounds cool. Let's make it um, track position filler. So we will also put it here so you can parameterize it later if you want to change the color. Oh man. <laughs> okay. So how do we model now the play state? Uh, we will need to know where we are inside the track when we are playing things, right? And we will need to generate events um plain index actually there is one probably thing that i should fix for now um so when we press on pause so here what happens we remove the plane index so we can see this behavior when we do this and then we do that and then we are always on the first one right so we can press here we go back and here then we can stop and then when we press unpause we actually lost position it is happening because here we are signing nil to that now instead of doing that we may need to add additional things so bounce post index right and for now so this thing there is an invariant of that never been the same and now we can also by the way since we now have this module state we can try to move some functions from some logic from the uh, live view thing to it so that our state is always consistent so let's implement a logic for pausing things right so pause and here, if you have plain index that is nil, we just, and this is our state, we just return the state, right? And if our pause is different, index, index, this is our state. What we do instead, we take our state and we say plain index is nil, but our post index is the old index. So I also think it's time to start writing specs here because otherwise it may become a bit annoying to manage so this is our state so we will call it t and then depending that we either return nil or we return and we can alias things here right we can alias the track so it's either track or nil and the we 
can also quickly write the documentation here. So returns uh, currently playing track or no. So for type C, we will need to say that this is a map and this map has plane index, which can be either non-negative integer or nil. So let's do that like that. Or post index. And then it has a list of tracks where we have this. So the same happens here, right? So we say pause and we have state. And then we take pause and take t and return t and the documentation is pause the playback in the state. Nice. So now now we can go here and we can make it ah and of course we need to unpause right so we will also need to play so what happens here when we do play a pause so we just set it to zero so that's why we were having this cursor jumping up uh, again so instead we will need to say unpause Or actually, just even simpler play. And then, depending on what we do, so if our post index is nil, then what we return is our state with. Yeah, I probably should actually move it one thing here because otherwise I think I will start to... Okay, quickly I will move my picture to the left and I will make the page a bit less pronounced. So I will just do this for now. Um, I will just move up the playlist itself. So instead we have class playlist. Um, <laughs> I, I can just actually make it even just smaller. So let's go and make it stretchy again. And then I can make it. Okay, that is playlist. We will need to go to our app. And here I think for container we will need to align items to flex start, right? Yikes, looks a bit too ugly. Maybe I would just add padding top. It should be like 500. Okay, that's perfect. And now the weirdness, sorry, that will look very awkward. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see that, um, yes, looks somewhat like this. Oops. Okay, good. So I think that will be a bit better in terms of seeing the actual, um, Holds it in right now because I'm starting to run out of vertical space. So um, here we can see that we can round, we can play, we can pause, and now we will need to implement the play logic here where we will use. So, uh, do we need to protect against triggering that when we have something already playing? 
like in principle yeah let's let, let's be very thorough so let's say um if you have plain index that is index which is in state then is integer index then what we do is we do nothing we just return the state um, if we have plain index which is no but post in index is also nil then what we do we return a state that plain index is set to zero and finally if we have a index post index which is not zero where it's integer we just set it to that so that is what we want to do here so take t we return t and we quickly write the doc where we say that um place in starts playback in the state um takes into account situations where something is already played nothing will happen then. or when something was posed before playback will start with that track so that's our logic here right um I think it's also time to maybe move it to another module to another file because otherwise it may be a bit uh, annoying to do. So I will just create this file here. I just call it statex, and I will just and I will need to still make it sub module of this. And same this track. So now we can. Yeah, and I maybe even want to uh, create a folder, so page life, because that all relates to this thing. In principle, this is even not related. Oh, actually, okay, playback is related to the um, live view thing, but like track is the main abstraction. So in principle, it can live in the main app, but for now, we won't care about that that much because we are mostly thinking about interface here. So I'm doing problem done again and now in our logic here we can say instead of manipulating this thing manually we can just um, state oh yeah and we can of course now we also need the helpers that will do something reasonable on top of those right so toggle play or pause so that will be our top level helper here We can say um, oh yeah we can also actually add a helper that will tell us if we have um, plane 
<laughs> so, um, and this is simple still plain index is new is not new. mod in plain mode mode is better well because then we don't have the thing. so now if plain state then we say we need to and otherwise we need to play so you see, we, we already have some kind of uh, domain model figuring, like we have this nice interplay between doing interface and then figuring more of our domain model and then codifying it and then using it in our interface. So here then we can just take socket assigns and we can just say um, state toggle player pause. And hopefully that will work. So now I'm wondering where it needs to. Ooh, I broke something, I think. <laughs> so um, let's see what did I break. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, I'm done. So state, yeah, assign. Socket state. Okay. What is happening? Oh, uh, okay. Oh, God. Okay. We probably should have really just went on with the state struct <laughs> because um, we are accidentally putting flash there which is a bit sad but okay um how it actually validate socket state sockets assigns like shall we um okay let's bite the bullet because otherwise we will regret it i guess so this will be module this will be um just struct so we will have plan index you will have post index you will have track by the way, there is also a very nice elixir syntax for this stuff, so you can also do it like that. Um, now, here we will need to again do the state thing, right? Q not found. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh god, um, that's of course is Q, not track. Yeah, that we already know, right? So um, then we just need to say in our state we do then this. So I say this is our state. Um, then index we will model all the okay then that's actually a better approach because 
this this thing we can then model all those actions as functions in the module of our struct which will give us nice encapsulation and we will never mix it up with something from the phoenix itself right so here um let's first see where that is happening so that happens in here of course um Let's go back to our magical template and let's try to make it nice. So first of all, let's take this state variable. Actually, we can write it manually, right? Index is not available. No function clause matching. Of course, because now it's actually working with state. So module. We need to add it now everywhere. Here, 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 here. Yeah, because we passed the whole assigns here, it's fine. So it goes to tracks, take length, and here you just take state. And then we also have, yeah. Where else do we have it? We are now logic for media button. So, okay, let's see if it works now. So, oh, I, yeah, that, those functions we'll need to fix. Okay, for now, we don't care about it. We just do this. Everything breaks, everything breaks so bad. Okay, plain index not found in. And that happened in the. State 32. Yeah, because um, now I need to look at our page life, and here we need to carefully go and make sure that we don't call anything directly and we always pass the state itself. So for play this, we pass track index, and instead, before we just set it directly in the assigns, now instead we will create a function here which will be okay, logically that actually should precede this so first we should be able to check toggle playback um, play and then we can also say play by index we also pass state and we'll pass index and this integer index so something like that. Um, and this, of course, will be module. Oh, and here, by the way, we also need to set the plane index to zero. Oh, to nil, sorry. So we have this state, and then what we need to do is just set the plane index to the index. I think and then we have spec. Let's say that we take state, and we will take a non negative integer and we return a state play a track by its its index in the queue in state okay oh 
so now here we can say so we take our state and we say socket assigns state and then okay here I actually don't mind doing that I can just say state play by index and we take track index um, and then we assign state state Okay, let's see if it will break terribly. Okay, that now works through our module, um, but that still breaks. So, keep playing index not found. Uh, that happens in page live state socket assigns state. And then we need to assign right. Okay, we were able to pause, but then we now have a new problem. So for plus index not found. Ozex. Ah, okay. I made a typo somewhere. Somewhere I made. Oh yeah, post index. <laughs> I made a typo. Um. Okay. So post plane. Okay. We don't jump up now. Now we need to move. Um. Okay, that doesn't yet work. Um. Um. We probably just need to provide methods. Play next. And by the way, I'm fully aware that we are not tracking anything about length. So, for example, when you press them backwards, it should actually first jump to the beginning of the track and then it should jump to the previous track. But for now, we don't have that. Let's first refactor the state and then we can try to implement something like that logic. So, um, in this state, if we say if plane state two, else you just say play state. So if it's plain, then we need to take the plane index and make sure that we need to show that we are not overflowing. So what was our logic here? So it's logic next, right? Then Okay, um, now we can, this logic is now gone, right? We just, so, state is equals to state play next from socket science state and then socket state state and that actually is something that we can even put here. So look how much less logic we actually need to write here now. Um, and that works. So let's go here, let's type it here, and 
we can see that our behavior is still working as expected. Now we would just need to do the same for previous, right? So Also doing exactly the same thing here, but here the logic will be different. And again, a bunch of logic is gone from here, so play previous, and we can also insert the, the previous. Okay. So let's refresh. Let's see. Okay, and we can now, okay, what is playing? Oh, that is playing, so, right? Well, we cannot actually trigger that, but uh, our, funny enough, our state can actually process it, but for now we decided to not allow that, and this is fine. Okay, this is, Beautiful. Maybe one thing that is a bit annoying is that this thing disappears. Maybe we just need to give it disabled state, right? So, um, disable it. Yeah, let's also quickly check that we don't do. So, okay. I want to check that we don't have any dependencies on this logic here anymore. We don't state state. Oops. Here we don't need this. So now, like, our live view module looks really nice, right? We only have those handlers that dispatch to state. We have some init state logic here, and which actually even doesn't belong here. We can also just put it like test state thing in state um, module. And we just do this here a little touch to make it a bit larger, but that's all. Um, how do we, okay, we did that. Now we need to somehow show, we need to show how we can go through the, we need to simulate the playback thing. And we need to make sure that this thing doesn't, that the tracker, how the track position is, has disabled. So, okay, track position, let's make it disabled. So, color will become, uh, we need to look at our thing. So, let's give it like, Oh yeah, the summer we had this disabled thing, thinking controls, right? So we have media button disabled, so this will be our disabled color. So let's also unify it. So disabled color, it's gray. So disabled color, right? Um, then here. So here, then we need to we actually need also to do the class. So let's just do it like that. We still trigger it, but do a bit different thing now. So instead of not rendering it, I will just give it different classes. We did similar thing before when we wanted to disable the auxiliary buttons. So we did it here, and we can do the same here, right? 
So um, track position class, and we say state. Oh yeah, by the way, here in in, in Simplate we still so we still depend on the manual knowledge about like which fields are which and say it, we shouldn't really. So we just say if state plane uh, state to else and so if state is plain then our class is just that. But if it's not, then it's Oh, yeah, sorry, track position, of course. So it's track position, or it's track position, track position disabled. Um, and then we can use the track position class. So Do the break. What is breaking? Function function your length is. Oh yeah, we solved the problem with that being length pretty length. Can we make it work properly with? Okay, uh, let's just do this. Length equals to. So we can actually do it even like that. So we can do length and track position class, right? And here, if it's plain, then everything's good. We execute this thing. And if not, then we just try it this. And here, then we can just say length. Beautiful. Now, of course, we need to also make sure that track position filler is also not um, not actually overriding the thing. But we will also need to make sure that, like, its width will depend on our progress in the track right so we will need to calculate actually where to place to where to place it i'm just thinking if we should implement this disabling thing now or if we can then later just set it to zero so that we don't have much additional logic here Let's first start with actually trying to track it, and then when we have that, we can just make sure that it doesn't have any bits, and then we will just have it disabled. So then it will look like how, how will I, it will actually look. So if I say that the length, the width is zero, okay, it doesn't, so it will just look like that, right? Okay. But for now, let's set it to something. Now, the interesting part, of course, is how to make it change the width of the element in live view and how to trigger those timer events. So this timer, I think it will be easier. We can just send ourselves a message every like second because that's our um, resolution here. We don't thankfully track milliseconds or something like that. So we can update that, but how do we make it draw different like yeah we have fully css solution right now can we somehow make its width different i really wonder let's see maybe in the documentation we can find something interesting about that so we don't need any of that time for now we will keep open let's look at x like your docs again It's a bunch of things. Color kit. 
and templates, paintings. Dom Pachin. different form events, key events, window focus, window key down, key up, trigger action, submit, change, hmm. JavaScript interrupt. Do we actually need to write any JavaScript here? That sounds weird. Can we hmm, can we somehow set it differently? Hmm. So like if like normally that's something that is very easy to achieve in JavaScript and very weird and tough to achieve here because we don't have access to DOM, right? Um, or oh, actually we do one, uh, okay, I'm dumb. We actually can do that. It's just um, instead of setting that in the CSS class, we can actually go for style, right? We can also, okay, let's see how our style override will work. So let's set this to this. And let's, uh, so this is not the most beautiful solution, I guess. Why doesn't it want to? Okay, that's really hacky. Important. Why doesn't it work? Does it even? Okay. Invalid property name. Uh, uh, really? What is invalid is with okay, uh, learning something new every day, I guess, which in style. attribute in HTML. Oh, can we actually, I wonder, so, do it work? No, it doesn't work, so. No, because it's if we cannot, we cannot set widths here, right? applies to, it doesn't apply to divs. 
it does stuff. Oh, oh my god. Um, I probably am dumb, right? I think that should work. Yes. Oh god. Okay. Okay. That's easy then. So then, uh, okay. That will be super hacky, but then we can actually set the progress. Um, so we will update our state so that we know. Um, okay, I don't need the inspector anymore. So apart from plane and post index, we also need to know play position, right? So. Um, And that can be essentially we can track it as play position seconds. So then here. We have this play position in seconds and this play position we can also manipulate. So that starts to collapse the things maybe. Oh no, we can't. But okay, let's try to twist to that. So I'll just put it here for now for simplicity so we can see everything. So next um how to call it like next um okay play advance play position by so, and that will be seconds and default will be one, right? And then um, it will just take state. And here it will be state, state, play position, seconds plus, like that would have been beautiful, right? But then the thing is, um, Depends on track length, we may need to actually change um, to next track. So here we can say if um, so state play position. Okay, first of all, if it's even playing. So if um, Plane. State is plain. Then, um, if it's not plain, that we always start from zero, right? We just say, uh, just say play, and here, post index, post index. In index, we, we will actually now need to also say about this. So, play next. So, play position will be zero here. If we then we do play, and if we do play by index, we also set it to zero. If we go to play next. Imagine now changing that in every handler we had for a button. So here really having this proper domain model pays off a lot. 
play previous playing index. And by the way, that will also eventually allow us to implement the proper previous button. And so we can teleport to the beginning of the track. Play position is now set here. For pause, we don't need to actually move it to a new variable like we did with playing index because if it's paused, it's paused, but we still just maintain the position, so it doesn't matter. Um, get playing track, playing if playing state. So now, if we are in playing state, we check new play position settings. It's state play position settings plus one. And then we need to check that we don't um, overrun our track lengths. So um, current track is get playing track from state. And actually, we can even simplify it. Uh, so we can say and to, if it's now, then we just say, okay, play. <laughs> then we actually do nothing. We, we won't trigger and play, play back here. If it's um, track, and here we have length. So um, now we can see. So do we have any magical thing? Okay, we have convert. Because we need to go from time to seconds, right? So convert calendar to different calendar. I don't want to convert to a different calendar. I so don't want. I just want to get maybe Okay, I guess it's time to add timex as our dependency, right? Um, so for now I just make it like that and then I can go and say So we need timex. Always separate the depths from the framework and that we need. And let's see what the current version of this is. Three, six. Now Sadly, we'll need to restart. But thankfully, it won't take very long. Ooh. Well, I guess. Um, local to bar. So once that is compiled, do I already have? Oh, yes. So 
from to native to date to time to parse if compare so we can just add it and see or let's see if I can also see okay is it working is everything all right yes okay we now have time x but we need to also see so documentation, we need to see how to compile the seconds, right? Create data times, convert to from dates, date times, date times, invariance, time zones, normalize, compare timestamps, measure exist time, time, normalize, Let's see format shift. Oh, actually, maybe I didn't actually need it. When I think about it, um, so modules. Maybe there is something in Erlang that I can use for that, right? Uh, not runtime, not timer, um, date. We can actually just Erlang. Or maybe I'm really mix, missing something here. So from Erlang uh, get your chance, Erlang uh, time tuple, and tuple to from seconds calendar. Install seconds to time. Oh my god, I'm so dumb. Okay, we, we had this function already. So let's see seconds to time. Uh, so 60 seconds is one minute. Oops. 65 seconds is one minute, five seconds. Okay, we didn't need time next. I'm done. Um, I won't go removing it now because I don't want to restart again. But we can now then do it simpler. So we can take this and then we can see. Um, If play position plus seconds and play position seconds, calendar seconds to time. It's also really long, so I will do it as a pipeline here for clarity. So, uh, and then we need to say time from Erlang. So we get play time, position time, play position time. And then we can say if current track, we get it. Oh, we already got it, and then depends in. Will it actually work? So, like, is comparison working when we have, for example, so zero six is less than oh, let's do it like that. True. And not semantics compare so should I... okay 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 so i think there is a function like before and after from arrow to arrow oh there is function compare oh yeah so that's how it will look then so we should get an atom lt here right yes and here we should yes beautiful and here we should get equal yes so now if 
we compare the length we play position time this our length of the track um, depending on the situation we can have multiple things right we can have if it's less then everything is perfect we just take our state and we set new play position so um, play position seconds will be new play position seconds um, if it's greater actually it's the same if it's greater it will be the same so um oh sorry if it's equal it will be the same so we only we say this and then we say if it's then we don't need that we can do that equals to greater so if we over ran our track then we need to play next right so And play next will, yeah, it will set the play position seconds to zero. So now, Uh, okay that, that doesn't matter okay so we implemented this logic uh we can now say advance advances play position in the current plane track by seconds it's default to one Second. If um, the length of the current track is exceeded, starts with the playback of the next track in states Q. You can also quickly do the so T and non-negative integer and t so that's the thing here let's play well now we only need to have some event in our live views that actually triggers that right so for that um we will need to maybe initialize timer i think actually they even had an example maybe we can just copy some code quickly um okay uh, let's go here so we can do it from pops up um, I think it was like you, Phoenix, like you um, can we get to the repository for you okay, now? Okay, GitHub, GitHub, yes, so. Oops, not lip we need here. We need um to see have a sets config static test. Maybe thanks. Maybe. Integration sanction. I think we had some example wrapper docs. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll have your example wrapper. So and here oops. 
so I think in oh yeah clock life sounds perfect so yeah ah okay there is this function time ascending to the wall that you can do you can just you will need to process it handle info okay that's perfect okay let's roll um so we can always just we actually can since our advanced function does nothing if nothing is plain we can always just send it so we can just kind of initialize the stuff so timer and interval so every this is every second i think right it's in in time uh i guess so well we will see it soon enough um send interval and message will be advanced or well, we can actually answer tick and then in handle before handle event we can do handle info and we can then say socket assigns state state advanced play position state equals no reply uh, sign so good state state beautiful something broke uh, <laughs> is undefined handle in for is undefined what handle info I'm I, I'm doing this right Oh, that arguments in arithmetic expression. State play position. How it actually? Oh, so when we start playback, we ah, I think because we initialized here manually, we forgot to. So like plain index, and here we forgot to set it to zero actually. Okay, I think there is no error now. But now we also need to make sure that it is actually plain. So um, let's roll. Let's make this thing um, in the template. Like right now, it shows length, right? Instead, it show it should show the playback position, but it should so in our state return advanced play position but let's also add the get play position we can say it from state and then And take this magical logic and then depends in so if state play position seconds So something like that, I guess, right? By the way, I forgot here to end this. Sure, we can also make it, oops, play position seconds. If it's nil, then I'll just do nil. Um, and if 
it's not null, then we can position do this and we don't need a branch here. We don't need this, so we can just check position. Maybe we can pass it to calendar and get the proper time. And then our function a position state um, should be the, and it will be either time to yeah and the dog will be transplay position trans current play position as time as time if nothing is plain returns nil so now we can use this um, because we can now go to our template and here instead of length we can say okay mm, play position will be then um, oh so this is actually this is different this is our play position right and instead of length it will then show um, It will then show play position. Um, state get play position. And we can then say uh what was the magical function it's pretty length oh um pretty time then everything breaks of course so pretty length will become pretty time and here we have a syntactic error so play position Um, and define function pretty time. Why? Why? I just define the function pretty time. Come on, you, you can do that. Pretty time one. Um, which I have at seventy five. Oh, um, we actually can just import this in so that we don't need to write it every time. And here we have, oh, yeah, and there instead of thanks to say play position. And we can see that our thing is working now, right? But now we also need to make this thing running. Um, so for filler style, we can then say um, so play position, play position class filler style um, here then the filler style will be nothing and here like with zero and here it will be with 
And now we actually need to also calculate percentage, right? Percentage. Length percentage. Um, length percentage will be then um, how do you actually get that state get um, play position get play position percentage from state that's a function we will need So here we also take module triple state and here we care about two things, right? We care about lengths of the current track if something is plain, so case okay if plain We will return zero here for simplicity. So if we are playing something, then, oh, uh, again, we actually don't need to do this check. We can just do the um, this thing where we take the plane track state. So if it's nil, then we return zero. If there is play oops play position seconds position seconds then we can take length time to air long Let's return time and then we can do calendar to oops, time to seconds. So length seconds. And then we can say, okay, we need to say if length seconds um, not equal to zero, should not divide by zero, bad idea. Um, we say play position seconds and um, not is nil just in case play position because those bugs can this nil having having nil here may also backfire later on i don't want to have too many bugs because of that so we say play position seconds is divided by length and we multiply it by 100 and that's it i think right i think so um we can oops uh, of course we have a syntax error before what oh my god i just edited it in <laughs> Okay, we need to switch those. So I'm really dumb. I only care about lengths here, and this should actually happen here. Positions. Okay. Ooh, um, so we get lengths here, and then we get state the position seconds okay returns the current play position as 
percentage of the total length of the plane track. Yeah. Plane track. If nothing is planed or track has no length or there's no play positions, it turns zero. So now no oh um that actually not integer so it will be is there a, like non negative number no just number um so now we can use this get play position percentage thing here and actually Oh, it actually already works, I think, right? Um, but then we need to just override stuff here. So instead of that, we need to just set it to fill our style. And hopefully we can see the playback. Okay, um, I think we are almost in two and a half hours, so we will finish now. Um, that's pretty cool stuff. We don't, we cannot yet navigate here, but we will do it next time. We have simulation of playback though. We have this comparatively nice looking thing. I will just give it an, one little thing. I want to make it stand out a bit more and then we can commit this code and be done for today. So this is in our controls section, right? Display width and we need to just add some padding around it. So we'll do it like that. So yeah, that looks way better, I think. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, we can also, by the way, just in case we can drop this in because we don't need Timex. So let's quickly close this scene. We can check out our mix log from the previous version. So, and then we can just add our stuff. Okay, looks nice. Playback simulation, state abstraction. So thank you for watching. See you next time. Probably in another week, I will do another stream. Um, hope it's interesting to see how we can simulate everything with the state and the CSS. And actually so far we were able to avoid writing any JavaScript. I really hope we can continue doing that. See you next time. Bye.